cool. Oh my God, the design of this is amazing. Uh, it's, it, as it's falling apart here, uh, it's immaculate knocking all, all the pouches off and I just knocked the shell off. What's going on you guys, over Jesse here. This is the Frozen Transform. It's a really big and awesome resin 3D printer that sports multiple screen upgrade options. The kind folks over at Frozen have sent me a few of those to test out and share with you guys. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the latest mono screen upgrade for this resin 3D printer. This is gonna enable me to print faster and that display should last a whole lot longer in terms of its lifespan since it's a consumable against your standard screens that are available on most resin 3D printers. So let's get everything unboxed and check out what's in here. Uh, I honestly have not really gone through most of this. So it looks like I will have to be doing some screwing and wiring work here. Hopefully no soldering. It looks like here is a control board that is gonna be replaced in the back of the machine. I'm, maybe not. It actually doesn't match the ports on the back of that. So we'll see where this all goes. I've got some bolts and a SD micro SD card on there as well. So they did mention that this particular version, swapping out this with the standard screen, should be somewhat straightforward. <laughs> We'll see how this goes. Um, I typically mess things up here and there. Yeah, so here is the display. Actually, they're right. This is actually gonna be pretty cool. So I can see right off the bat with this. This is actually very cool. If I open up the unit here, I've already take, taken out the build plate and the vat here. So this actually doesn't look like it's gonna be too bad. This is the whole top panel of the printer here. So this is the, the display screen. Here's all the connection bits. It looks like I'm literally just gonna have to remove the bolts from the top here. I thought I was gonna have to run out and get some uh, electrical tape, but it's already comes pre-taped and everything's ready to go. So it does look like I'm literally just gonna have to pull this out and reconnect some new wires. I'm not entirely sure where this is gonna go. So I need to pull up the instructions that they sent me over on my laptop and then we'll take a look at getting it installed. Boom, it's working. All right, so I ended up disassembling the new display, replugging in the old display just to make sure I wasn't going crazy with my wiring that I did there. And yeah, then I uh, took a look at the profile, the default profile that I was printing with and took a snapshot of that just so I have a comparison of it. I also fired up a print that I have recently done on that and I could not for the life of me remember how long it took to print, but it says on screen that it was gonna take 23 hours to print. For some reason, I don't think it was gonna take that long. Maybe it did, I just don't quite recall. But uh, the important thing is I was able to get this all reset back up, rewired up, and then this time around, when I run the LCD test here, everything lights up. So previously it was lighting up like this where it wasn't really lighting up. And then now you see after a few seconds, it kicks on. On the previous display, that the original display, there is a fan on the board that helps, I'm assuming, keep it cool. And the new mono screen doesn't have that. So in theory, this should be, even though I've got everything open here, it should be quieter than it was before. It also means that those mono screens just do not run nearly as hot as these LCD screens do on your typical resin 3D printers. So let's get some prints fired up and see how this actually goes. All right, so I've been running prints for the last few days on the Frozen Transform with this new mono screen upgrade. And I have to say, I have been really impressed with the prints that I've seen so far off of this machine. So this is actually the third resin 3D printer that I've been able to print with that has a mono screen. So the first one being the Frozen Sonic Mini. Then I've most recently had the chance to take a look at the Elgu Saturn, which is a nice mid-size resin 3D printer that's gonna be sporting a mono screen which is available later this year. And now the Frozen Transform with this mono screen upgrade. This is obviously the biggest of the Resin 3D printers that I've had a chance to work with in this mono screen setup. And I have to say across all of them, there's about a 20 to 30% increase in print speed that I'm seeing compared to other prints that I might have run without that particular screen. I have also basically just been working with the default printer profile that's come with the transform for the mono screen display. I was able to get some prints off using the frozen ABS-like gray resin, and then I also used a whole bunch of my Cerotech fast resin since that's 
pretty much my go-to and it worked perfectly with these default settings as far as I could tell. Speaking of that, let's take a look at some of these prints here. So the first thing that I did was uh, I ran a few test prints just to make sure I could get it. Everything was printing correctly as it should have been. Uh, but then I loaded up a full build plate of these miniatures. It's these little miniature monsters here. These are from the Crom's Fall Kickstarter for a new monster miniature campaign. I'll have links down below. You could find that over on my mini factory as well. Uh, this is the hound file and I absolutely love it. It's a really cool, nicely detailed file. And I tried to put a whole build plate of these on there just to see how well it would print. And turns out some of the prints ended up not adhering and I ended up having some print issues with that. So I ended up taking everything out, cleaning it out and I re-leveled everything. And after that, I was getting really great results with pretty much all of my prints. Also, how cool is this? So I was trying to remember how long the actual print took for this hound file. And I connected to the frozen printer from my phone through the IP address. That's how you connect to it on your network. And right here, I can see that it took me three hours and 50 minutes to print a full build plate of these hound miniatures, which is really dang cool. All right, so if you watched the original Frozen Transform video, you saw that I printed one of these Red Hood Oni Max from Villainous Props. This was about a 24 hour print originally, and I was just blown away at being able to print a full face mask on a resin 3 printer. And still to this day, I absolutely love this resin print. Fits great. Well, I decided, you know what? I wanna retest this and see how much faster it will be to print this on the mono screen. And so here is the slightly modified version of the same file. If you're noticing that there is a slight difference and that I can't fit it on my face, it's scaled the exact same way. Uh, but yeah, this one's just slightly squished versus this one. Yeah, yours truly over here completely screwed this up when slicing the file. I ended up using the wrong pr printer platform in Cheetahbox since I have about a gazillion printers in there now. I accidentally had the wrong printer profile loaded in there. And then when it went to print this, it more or less just squished the file. It squished it onto the screen. I, I you know, had no idea and I couldn't figure out why this was looking funky after I printed. So that was the only thing that I could think of. But the what's important is that they are still the same height. It's just the width is squished in. And that's what resin printers really care about is not necessarily how much you maximize the build plate like an FDM printer. That's not going to increase the print time. It's how what's the volume and what's the resolution that you're printing at. So I still printed this at 0 0.05 millimeter layer height and the height stayed the same for the print and it was a, I believe a 15 hour print for this Oni mask. Correction, it was a 16 and about 16 and a half hour print for the Oni mask. So still a very significant change from the 24 hours that it, I think it was about 20 to 24 hours for the original mask here on the standard screen. So again, a very significant improvement in terms of its, its time to print, which is just seriously impressive. The next thing I printed is really cool. And if you follow me over on Instagram, you'll probably have seen a post that I just recently did of this Raphael figure. And you'll see here it's in pieces. Why is it in pieces? Well, I ended up having some print issues with the some of the parts here during the printing for this, it was a like crammed build plate. And these larger parts ended up having some print defects. So here on the chest body here, it ended up splitting. Uh, on the turtle back here, it ended up splitting as well. I was not entirely clear why this had happened, but some of the great folks over at the Transform Facebook group pointed out that there might have been some residual uh, residue from some of the previous prints stuck on the FEP screen and it caused some of these print issues or uh, could have been um, many other things. I don't know. Everything printed fine up until this point. <laughs> so uh, what I ended up doing was taking all the other parts, leaving them as is and just reprinting the chest, the shell and the legs. And here is the results. And this thing is so Cool, oh my God, the design of this is amazing. Uh, it's, it, as it's falling apart here, uh, it's immaculate, <laughs> knocking all, all the pouches off and I just knocked the shell off. 
Uh, everything's immaculately keyed on this particular figure. So everything fits together really nicely. I just had to do a minimal amount of sanding or Dremel work to actually get the, the joints here, the legs or the other body parts to, to slide together. Uh, but yeah, the detail is just absolutely fantastic. They're, on the head, I'm seeing a little bit of layer printing issues here. So I, I could either reprint this at maybe a higher resolution or what I'm just gonna end up doing is just sanding it because it sands so smooth and so easily. It'll be a really easy cleanup process. And by the way, this is a free file that you can download off of my mini factory. The designer is Jay Sousa. I'm gonna butcher your name. That's why I just said Jay. Apologies, my man. I'll have links to his social media as well as direct links to his profile on my mini factory because he has some ridiculously cool files that you can run off and 3D print. And finally, I have this amazing Batgirl statue by the same artist. And it's seriously one of the most beautiful files and sculptures that I've seen. If you're a fan of Batman or Batgirl, you're for sure gonna wanna download and print this. Again, beautifully keyed so it's easy to assemble. Everything snapped together very nicely. I have just a tiny bit of glue uh, in each of the joints here for both the Raphael from the Turtles as well as Batgirl here so I can get them unassembled after the video because I want to look at further getting these sanded and painted because they're just stunning, absolutely stunning prints. And I'm blown away with the results that you can get from resin 3D printing. And not only that, the time that it takes to print these is just, it's pretty incredible. The, the mono screen, if you can afford it, is a really, really worthwhile investment and upgrade for the Frozen Transform. So if you're on the fence, maybe you already have a Transform and you're thinking about upgrading, I would say, yeah, you should just go in and upgrade. I really don't see a downside to this at any point in time other than just the cost factor. Obviously an extra $900 on top of already spending $2,000 for a resin 3 printer is pretty hefty price tag. However, again, you're getting that about 20 to 30% print speed increase as well as that advanced lifespan for the display. And again, let me know in the comments what you guys think about these mono screen upgrades. It's great to see this upgrade option available for any of the transform owners, or if you're interested in the transform, this is certainly another reason why you might wanna consider this resin 3D printer just for that upgrade factor. It is a little bit of a steep, you know, upgrade cost. However, you are getting that 20 to 30% print increase in speed, as well as the lifespan advantage from working with that mono screen over the LCD display. Hey, thanks so much for watching you guys. And again, let me down in the comments if you guys have any questions or wanna see me print anything cool and crazy on this machine. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now. All right, so one of you guys online asked if the Sonic Mini would actually fit inside the Frozen Transform. I'm pretty sure it will, but let's give it a test and see. This is probably a really dumb idea. I put down some paper towel here over the screen, just give it a little bit of protection. Let's lift it up and see if it will fit. I probably should have removed the build plate, but it will uh, fit. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it totally fits. Uh, obviously a lot bigger than the actual screen itself, but it totally fits inside the transform. Is that a myth busted? Have, uh, have I missed? I'm a, I'm a myth buster now? Maybe. I don't know.